guys folks, 17th of March, uh, I've been here on the wheel, had a bit of a funny day throwing, I've been, I was actually trying to make these, somebody asked me for some of these mugs, these lady kind of mugs, so I thought I'd have a go at doing them over on the other wheel. Ooh, battery doesn't look too good on this. Yeah, I was sort of trying to make them here, and I did make some. Um, but I decided, oh, I, I really prefer the kick wheel. <laughs> so, I've been uh, reverted now, and I've come back over here to make them over here. Yes, uh, we have some tankards here that are, are, are drying off, that uh, were made, have been made over the course of the last days so yeah as you see they're upside down so we always like to turn up our, our pots upside down so that they dry evenly don't forget to do that here's that teaching example of how to throw a cylinder in seven stages okay I've got a couple of lumps left on the wheel here I think we're going to get right to it because I just don't know how long this battery it says it's got 74 minutes left, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, let me just rattle off a couple more of these. Gauge is set. These are ladies mugs. I make these. I haven't made them for ages. Um, I make them five and a quarter high, and it's 13 ounces of clay. 13, yeah. So. Yeah, I like. I just like the rhythm of the the treadle wheel. It's just, it just feel disconnected on the electric wheel. It's just so yeah. Back on the old the old kit wheel, treadle wheel. So these, as with all pots, you know. That when you're throwing, you need to find your you need to find your rhythm when you're repeat throwing. So I'm just going to get some height here fairly quickly. Of course, it's just really a cylinder, isn't it? The best thing is to sort of throw a sort of cylinder type form like this. And now I'm sort of starting to belly it once I'm almost sort of got it height wise. Up to the gauge. When you water, spread your fingers like that. Put the hand over, put the water there like that. And it runs down both fingers, you see, onto the pot. It's probably the number one reason I would get, I would say, that people um, you know, when you're learning to throw you get a lot of, you do get a lot of frustrations and that is most of the time it's five and a quarter, yeah, most of the time it's because of inadequate watering uh, of the pot the water the water is is the lifeblood of the pot isn't it it's like oil is the lifeblood of your car engine I was just thinking about uh, you know some of the pots we I showed you in the last in the last video clip that went wrong in the last firing. Yeah, incidentally, I've made up a fresh batch of glaze, and it's not grey like that other one at all. It's like it normally is. I just cannot figure out what on earth, what on earth, Owen and I put in that glaze. Well, I, I have figured it out. It's 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 wood ash of some kind. 
Well, I can only imagine if it's wood ash that comes out of my firebox, it's wood ash from there. But uh, anyway, we made up a fresh batch. I've made up a fresh batch of glazer. I haven't uh, screened it yet, sieved it, but it's 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 there, ready to do. It looks it looks more in keeping with how it how it should be. So yes, um, the other the other thing that I spoke about with you, and that was. I showed you a couple of a couple of pots that had blowouts on them, and I don't know why, but just occasionally, you know, when you, especially if you recycle clay, just something to bear in mind. If you recycle clay, like look at this wheel here, for example. You see, well, I've got all this stuff in here. Well, you know what? Stuff falls down from the ceiling. All kinds of. <laughs> All kinds of things, you know, dirt gets into clay. If you have clay on a wheel like this that is open, and it's open like this, I can't remember, the last time I cleaned out this wheel was probably, probably last year sometime. I don't, I don't tend to need to clean it out very often. I probably clean it out three times, four times in a year. So consequently, you know, the stuff that, that comes in here, maybe bits fall off my apron. Well, you might argue and say, well, they're all clay, Simon, aren't they? Well, that's what I would think. But you know what? I'm throwing a pot and I feel something hard in it. I, uh, you know, when you're throwing up the wall of the pot, you feel and you feel and I stop it and I feel it and, I, and I, there's something there and I dig it out. And I look at it and I think, my golly, that's like a little grit, you know. Where did that come from? Well, to be honest, I don't know exactly where everything, every little bit of dirt comes from. But I know that I don't want it in my pot, in my clay, because it causes blowout. Well, not every, necessarily every little piece of dirt is going to cause a blowout. It depends what it is. What its, what its consistency is. I mean, it might be something, for example, it might be a little bit of wood or something, in which case that won't really cause a blowout. That will leave a hole in the side of the pot. Um, but if it's anything that's got any lime in it or plaster, well, that will, that will cause a, uh, a, a blowout effect. And sometimes blowouts can occur, sometimes they occur in the kiln, as you saw uh, those pots that I showed you. Now they came out of the kiln like that. I have had it happen when they're, you know, about a month later, like a chunk of a pot, you know, say a pot in the, in the gallery space out there. Um, there's a little... I suddenly think, what's that on the on the on the shelf there? And I look, and then I look at the pot, and I see a bit has just jumped off the side of the pot. How about that? It's pretty freaky when that happens. It's not very nice. It's very it's rather disconcerting, isn't it? So yeah, well, anyway, so I was just thinking. Yeah, the more you handle clay, the more you've got to process it, recycle it. There's all there's opportunity, opportunity for foreign bodies, etc., to to get into the clay. So just be aware of that and make sure you cover up clay. If it's I got clay in here in buckets, you know. Well, they have lids on, of course. That is. That is absolutely essential that they have lids. But in a sense, this wheel doesn't have a lid, does it? And I was thinking maybe I should get a piece of wood or make something that would just go over here. Or when I've finished throwing, you know, for the day or whatever, I have something, a cover that I... Now, you know, you, you, could, you could... You could use a piece of... Just have a piece of plastic, couldn't you, I suppose? 
doesn't have to be anything anything fancy. Anyway, these are frustrations that we have as potters sometimes. You just have to you have to be a little bit of a Sherlock Holmes and try and detect what it is or what is the cause you know for those things that happen. Try to get to the bottom of it. Yes sir, right. Cut him off. I'm just about done. Um, oh, I'm feeling I'm feeling that rhythm, you know, coming. Just just feeling that rhythm coming. Go to my website, simonleachpottery.com. Um, I have workshops up there on the on the uh, on the website. If you want to come on an in-person wor workshop here to the studio, which I'm running, as I told you, just um, call me up or write to me, Simon Leach Pottery at gmail.com. Write to me, and I'll tell you if we have space. Okay. Um, yeah, bookings are a little bit down this year, uh, to be expected, I suppose, as people are undecided about their plans and what they think they're going to be doing throughout the year. So I guess that's to be expected. But we are doing, I'm still doing Zoom. If anybody is interested, write to me about that. I'll give you details. And I can pretty much do that, you know, for anybody who wants it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, leech treadle wheels I am having made. I am having made. I've uh, I've actually sold this wheel. I've been talking about it over the while, you know, that it's it's for sale if anybody wants it. And um, yeah, somebody's coming to pick that one up. Bought and paid for by Jeff. Let me show you that glaze. Let me show you the glaze that went wrong. Here I call it, you see, ADG. When I was working for Dad at home, we had a big bucket of glaze, and I used to say, what's ADG stand for, Father? He used to say, amalgamated dud glazes. <laughs> now, I don't know if you can see in here, you see this brown liquid. Well, this is, I think it's, it's, it feels very slippy, you know, slippery. It's lie. Uh, so, this is my ADG. Anyway, I just mixed up here. You know, I've been going through all these ingredients, looking carefully. As somebody did say correctly, make sure that the what's written on the lid is the same as what's written on the side. Um, well, that one isn't written on the side, but it does have a piece of paper in there that says whiting. And that might be actually another, as a third precaution, write it on the lid, write it on the side, and put a piece of paper inside, even. Talc. Yeah. That's EPK. Kaolin. And that is written on there somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah, just do that. And if you do that, you should be okay. And then this is the glaze that I I mixed up this small this morning. You can see that's the proper colour. That's waiting to be put through the screen, which I'll probably I'll probably do on the potter's wheel here, or I might use Eddie's contraption, <laughs> old Eddie, who writes to me from time to time. <laughs> I have used his. I have used his thing. He he get he he came here one day, brought this for me, and um, this is uh, what Eddie made. It's like got a sort of like a like a, a a brush down the bottom there, and he's he's uh, set it up like this. It works brilliantly. But I, 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 I don't use it lightly, if you know what I mean, because it's, it's all got to be washed up. 
So there's always something to bear in mind, you know, it's like anything, isn't it? Like a kitchen appliance or something. You think twice about whether you're going to use it because you think, oh, God, I've got to wash that whole thing up again afterwards. So anyway, yeah, so we're, yeah, we can wash it up there here in the, in the, in the sink. Yeah, there he is. Eddie's Pottery. Can't remember exactly where he lives now. I can't remember if it's, it might be Illinois, actually. I think it might be Illinois. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's, hopefully it's going to be good. Ah, oh, la, la, la. There's always something to figure out, isn't there? It was, uh, like, it's never, you know, it's like, yeah, yesterday I took a car out of the garage and I thought, good gracious me. <laughs> I haven't heard that noise before, you know. <laughs> you ever sort of get a noise coming from your car and en the engine noise or something and you think, Oh my gosh, what's that? So I noticed there was a noise, so... And then I, I, I had a look at the... It seemed to be when I moved the steering wheel, you know, I get in this kind of whining. And I thought, oh, that doesn't sound good. It sounds like the, the power steering pump, you know, is on the way out, you know. Just suddenly happened, you know. So I went up to see Dave, my mechanic up the road, to give him give me my his thoughts. He said... <laughs> Have you checked the fluid? I thought, poor, no, that's a good idea. <laughs> what a brilliant idea. So I we had, went outside and I had a look at the fluid. The reservoir on the fluid was, wasn't was low, it was empty. Completely out. I have noticed that it does go down from time to time. I think it's got a leak somewhere. So anyway, so I topped it back up, you know, to the proper level, and lo and behold, the whining went away, it's all good. But you know, it's like, there's always something, isn't there, to figure out with the car. You know, something, you always, you think it's going great, and then you suddenly, you suddenly, you, you before you know it, you've got a bill for $500, don't you? Just out of the blue, just happened. Pottery is, is a bit similar in a different kind of way, I suppose. Anyway, thanks for joining me, folks. Yeah, if you're interested in a leech treadle wheel, I am taking orders for a fresh batch. I've got a couple of people who put down deposits. So we're pretty soon ready to go. Um, so if you're interested, give me a shout. The best wheel, without any doubt. Without any doubt. You wouldn't know that, though, if you hadn't thrown pots on one. Has to be experienced to be believed <laughs> but it's true it's true anyway yeah until next time keep practicing i'll see you around dee, 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 dee.